if you don't like praise, you're not going to like heaven. Because heaven is all about praise. praise. We're going to begin this Wednesday night studying the book of Revelation, and we're going to see that there was a whole lot of praise, hallelujah, going on in heaven. So if you can't praise him here, I'm afraid you're not going to be prepared to praise him there. Because this is just a rehearsal. But up there, we're going to really sing and shout. God is worthy of praise. He deserves our praise. Yes, I know if I were that sister on deck man, right now, she's taking all the things that she can pray. God saw. Yes. Everybody has a testimony. Yes. Everybody has an experience with God. Everybody has had something that God has done in their life. Yes. Some change he made in their life. Some things he provided for their life. Yes. Some things he's done through them and for them and to them. They ought to give God praise for the thing. Oh, yes. Say the truth if it didn't do anything else. If it didn't do any more than it's already done, right. it's done more than I deserve. Right. See, Jeremiah reminded me in Lamentation 3 23, it of the Lord mercies yeah. that were not consumed because the compassion fell out, they're new every morning. Right. Every morning we experience a new compassion. Right. Every morning we experience a new mercy. Right. Every morning we experience, my daddy said this way. When I lay down last night, uh, it wasn't in bed. Uh, when I rolled this morning, uh, it wasn't in judgment. But the blood was still running warm in my veins. And I had the right activity in my members. I was cold in my right mind. I didn't know my dad was speaking scripture. I thought it was a book of books. But it was a book of Luke, James, and John. Well, I just how good uh, God is. I'm glad today to know that God is good. Because a bad fellow like me. Need a good God. Yeah. I know we go to Sunday school. Yeah. I know we go to church. Yeah. I know we go to Bible class. Yeah. And there was a time I went to Bible class and did nothing they said do in Bible class. Yeah. I'm so glad that God overlooked my faults. Yeah. Old folks can say, I guess I can say old folks now because I'm not an old. <laughs> he allowed my golden moments. And I don't know how you let anybody make you bad, mad to God has died to make you glad. You said, these things have I done to you, that my joy and they remain in you, and that your joy and my be full. Don't let anybody take what God has come to do. Yeah. Yeah. God again. Yeah. Yeah. God's been too good. Yeah. So the morning, I want, I want to read from the Luke 18 chapter, verse 1, and I'm going to do my best not to be long. I went over my son, my son, and my son said, yeah, that's going to take about hours. I'm going to give him the real digest version. I'm just going to convince him. Pray for my son. He preached this morning at uh, the Baptist Church in Cincinnati. And I really had wanted to go hear him, but, you know, he understands that I have a mission, that I have a calling. And I'm not just saying, uh, uh, as a church, that, that I'm making an investment. And so even though my son preached this morning, and I would have loved to have been there, uh, I, I, I felt that God let me be here. You know, sometimes you have to be in mind where you're going to be. And, and where I want to be until God says something different where he wants me to be. And what I want to do is if God tells me to do something different, I want to do what he tells me to do. But, you know, but God got to get your attention when he tell you things. It amazes me that folk are confused by what God wants to do. God said, when you see, see something good, do it. <laughs> you ain't going to wait for something to do. Got a lot of good things to do. All around you, around this church, around your home, Man. around your job, there's some lost folk you sleep with. Do something good. Amen. Tell them how good God is. That's right. Amen? Amen. And so, but it takes courage to do that, doesn't it? And so it's important we're talking about prayer because I think it's through prayer that we can find the courage, the wisdom, the understanding to really grow to be who God wants us to be. And, and secondly, I want to talk about prayer because I think prayer is one of those underutilized resources. Uh, the Bible says that we have three resources that God has given us to be able to deal with anything, be able to come anything. Ain't not one of them money. God said that, that, that I, I, He given us three resources that we can be able to deal with anything. I'm going to give that a minute. Us to be patient. I can't wait for you to be old. She has old ways right now. <laughs> but when she get old, it's so interesting. And you, and you 
know y'all can always stop when you get there. You don't hurt my feelings. Amen. I was the youngest child for a long time. I got my feelings hurt a lot. I'm through. I'm over with that. <laughs> my, my brother and sister hurt my feelings real good, real often, so I'm through. And I heard that. I told my mama everything they did. <laughs> Jesus didn't say, I want my church to be known, but the church is saint. 
Is that what my church would call a house of prayer? You've turned into thieves, a fan of big thieves and robbers. But my inner in my house would be called a house of prayer. You see, God has a lot to say about prayer. All right. I understand why we don't pray. And I understand why we said this morning we get to business prayer. And I understand why we sometimes don't have a lot of confidence in prayer. But God had a lot to say about prayer. I told you earlier that 676 times I looked it up. God has said something about prayer or something about the word prayer. 452 times in the Old Testament and 224 times in the New Testament. God is talking about prayer. You know, God mentioned something 776 times, but maybe he's trying to get us to understand something. Right. Maybe in my daughter's the saying, maybe God's trying to tell you something. Right. The reason you can't sleep at night, uh, maybe God's trying to tell you something. Yeah. Right. And when he talks about prayer, he's trying to tell you something. Yeah. He's trying to tell you that you don't need to worry about it, but you need to pray. And he's trying to tell you, you don't need to be bothered about it, but you need to pray. And uh, he's trying to tell you, you don't need to be upset about it, but you need to pray. Right. Whatever the issue is, and whatever the circumstances are, and whatever the problem, uh, Jesus said men are always afraid. Paul said, well, pray about everything and worry about nothing. Right. And sometimes we get it back. We worry about everything and pray about nothing. Men are always afraid. Men are always afraid. If you don't get anything else out of this message from God this morning, you all understand that men are always Prayer unlocks the power that God has given us uh, uh, through the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again in case you missed it. Prayer unlocks the power that God has given us through the Holy Spirit. You remember Acts 1 8, Jesus said to the disciples, You shall receive power after that Holy Spirit has come upon you. You have the power to be my witness. You have the power to look like me. You have the power to act like me. You don't have the power to walk like me, talk like me, you'll be a witness of me. You'll be an example of who I am and what I've done. You'll have the power. Yeah. But Paul said that through prayer, that the power of God within us is unleashed and unlocked right. to empower us. Right. You heard somebody read, I think, what the Bible is saying in 3.20. Now to him the lady to do seed in abundantly above all that you ask of me. According to the power which worketh in us, the power of God is available to us. And the power of God is in us, but he reduces the power through prayer. You see, the Holy Spirit is one of those resources that Prayer is one of the resources that God gives us. And God unlocks the power of the Holy Spirit through prayer. If you want the power of God and the Spirit of God to be ever in your life, if you want the power to move mountains in your life and you want the power to overcome challenges in your life, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit is released through prayer. And you don't have to worry about the, how well you pray. And you don't have to worry about what you say when you pray. Because all you need to do is just pray. You remember when Jesus was praying one day, his disciples, uh, they came to him and they didn't ask him to tell, tell them how to pray. But they said, Lord, teach us to pray. The problem in our lives is many of us don't pray. And we don't pray about everything. And we don't pray without ceasing. And we don't pray continually. And we don't pray instantly. And we don't pray faithfully. Right. But the power of God that's already in you. The wisdom of God is already in you. The understanding of God is already in you. is released the power of prayer. Right. You see, in Catholic work that the power company. They call it the hospital utility, but my group is the, the power company. The White House. <laughs> and when you give her a check, she releases the power of hospital utilities to your house. But if you don't give her no check, she disables the power of hospital utilities. But that's what they don't do when it's cold. <laughs> don't blame Kathy. You, you, you didn't pay your bill. She just worked there. She didn't pay your bill. Don't 
Oh, I can't hear it. I said, can you tell me? Yeah, I can take your check and give it to him. <laughs> you, you got the power of God already in you. He said that he could do exceeding abundantly. He put a L-Y. He put abundantly above all you. You ask. You can't ask God enough. You, you can't think big enough to find yourself in a, a situation that God can do above what you ask or think according to the power. Which word? Which word is in us? So the power is unleashed through prayer. And I said you don't have to worry about what you say when you pray. Because let me tell you something, you ain't as far as you think you are. And you don't know it, but you think you know. And you really sometimes don't know what you prayed about. The Bible says that we don't have to be concerned about how well we pray or even what we say when we pray. For he said in Romans 8, 26, which one of the deepest favorite verses, like wine the spirit, heaven our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the spirit itself makes intercessions for us in groaning which cannot be earth. See, God didn't even trust you to do it by yourself. But the Spirit of God is also talking to God about you. And the Spirit of God is also talking to God about what your needs are. And the Spirit of God is talking to God about comforting you, about strengthening you and sustaining you. So you see, when we pray, we unleash the power of God. When we pray, we unleash the Spirit to be able to intercede to God on our behalf and remind us of the promises and the blessing that God has promised us. May I say that God has promised us something when we pray? Let me say that again in case you missed it. God has promised us something when we pray. He's not promised anything we don't pray, but He's promised us something when we pray. He said in Jeremiah 3 3, Jeremiah 30, let me say this one, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3, the letter read, Call unto me. And I'll answer thee. You know what I promise? Yeah. Call him the pastor. He might ask you uh, if his cell phone is working and he's paid the cell phone bill. He might ask you. He might ask you if he sees your number and feel like being bothered with you. He might ask you. <laughs> y'all do the same. <laughs> y'all see my number, you don't bother me. I know you're there. <laughs> Pick up. If you don't really bother you, you're going to say, Pastor, don't bother me. I, I, I don't read between the lines. They say, don't call my number. Because <laughs> if you don't say nothing, the fact you don't answer, I will know y'all answer. I wait for the answer, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> I asked the deacon the question, make a prayer and say, yes, no, baby. <laughs> hey, you pick up the journey. Yes, I am. Journey, I'll send me a text. This shit. You get my text. <laughs> but you know, when, when you text God, you don't have to say, God, did you hear? Did you get my text? He said, call unto me, and I'll ask. And I'll promise you something. I'll show thee great and mighty things that thou didn't even know to ask me. Uh, I didn't know what to ask God about raising children, but he, 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 he did it in a way better than I could have done. I didn't know anything about trying to get married together, but he did it better than I could do. I didn't know anything about giving my finances and, and, and education and job, but he did it better than I even thought to ask him. You know what's when I told God that I want to make love in seventh grade? I tell you, I said, God, I want to make twelve thousand dollars a year. Can you imagine that's what I thought was big money in the seventh grade? Aren't you glad God didn't listen to me? <laughs> and you want God to ask you every prayer. Sometimes God gives you exactly what you ask for. God, God, I'm on him, okay, baby. <laughs> I just have to have it for you. <laughs> I want children, okay. And what I love about God when he gives you something can't get back. <laughs> he has a no return policy. He 
you don't like belt. You know, I waited about two or three years to take a belt like a belt, and they took it. I mean, I bought it, then I just had no receipt. That's right. I have an honest face. <laughs> He promised an answer. And so I, I, I'm about finished because I want to just tell you a couple of things as you go home. Because this means nothing. It's, it's when we leave it today, we don't pray. If we don't pray for each other, if we don't pray with each other, this, this day of worship would have meant nothing if it doesn't result in us spending more time in prayer. I'm convinced that the problem that St. Andrew's faith, that your family faith, that your children faith can be resolved, can be dealt with, can be handled, can be overcome through prayer. Your mama used to believe that, and that's why she stays on her knees. So, God said we don't need to be over concerned and worried about anything because when we pray, we don't have to work. Paul said, be careful for nothing. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7 and 8, he said, listen, if you need to receive something, pray. If you uh, have lost something, are trying to find something, he said, what? Pray. He said, if you need some of you need, you need your husband part of You need your son or daughter part of Jesus said, pray. Did he not say in Matthew 7, 7, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. For he that asks, receive it. And he that seek, find it. To him that knock, the door is open. And so when doors are closed, uh, you need to pray. And uh, when things are lost, when you lost your peace, and, and you lost your joy, uh, you need to pray. When you lost your health, uh, you need to pray. You see, when Paul lost his health, uh, he began to pray. And God answered him and said, Paul, uh, my grace is sufficient for you. And uh, in your weakness am I made strong. And Paul said in that second Corinthians 12, uh, around verse 7, uh, more gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmities, uh, that the power of Christ may rest in you. Paul said, I can glory in my sicknesses because the power of Christ will sustain me and the power of Christ will keep me and the power of Christ will protect me and the power of Christ will provide for me when I pray. And we need, when you have a need, you need to pray. And you, you, I, let me tell you something. Sometimes we feel that we can't ask them about anything. Is that right? And sometimes we don't want to bother folk about things. And sometimes we don't tell folk our business and, and we have a need. But Jesus said, if you have a need, you need to pray. He said in Hebrews 4, 16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. Isn't that right? That we may be able to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. If you got a need, you need to pray. If you got something that's locked that you need open, you need to pray. Jesus said, Paul said, we ought to pray instantly. Prayer shouldn't be the last thing to do. Prayer should be the first thing to do. Before you call your mama, pray, and maybe you won't even have to call your mama. Because you call the pastor. Maybe you should pray. You won't even have to call the pastor. See, the pastor don't know everything either. Because the pastor will be the prayer for him. Paul said in Romans 12, patience, rejoice in hope. Patience in tribulation. Continue in instant prayer. The instant you need to pray, do what? The moment you need to pray, the moment doubt arises, the moment fear arises, the moment frustration arises, the moment anger arises, the moment discouragement arises, you need to, if, if you believe in the power of prayer, if you believe in prayer can make a difference, the prayer can cost you, the prayer can sustain you. you know, and God gave us so many examples of people praying.
praying so we can learn from this example. Hezekiah had a death sentence. He did what? He prayed. Three human boys were about to be thrown into a flower first, and they did what? Daniel was about to put a lion, then he did what? Can that become our response to things? That before we get bothered, before we get angry, before we get back, if, if you know somebody needs to be changed, are you praying for God to change them? Are you trying to just fuss at them until you change them? Because if I'm praying for that person, it's going to be hard to be bothered with that person. Now, I said if I'm praying about that person, I said praying for that person. You know, y'all come down here sometimes, we have a prayer that, oh, Lord, I'm so John, stop drinking, I'm sorry, Ralph, you're no good. <laughs> you just pray about John. You're not praying for John. We all know John drink. We all know he's sorry. He's going to tell us. We already know that. Just come pray for John. You know, we're like sneaking praying about somebody. That old sorry husband of mine. Lord, you made me on me. <laughs> we all know he's sorry. You can't make that up. Pray for him, not pray about him. When you dig a ditch, you better dig too, because when this dig, you dig too. You talk about me just much clearer, talk about you when you get my knees. Where did it come from? I'm going to pray for you when I get on my knees. Because if you're my enemy, I'm on. And you're hungry for the what? And if you're thirsty, I'm going to get what? Hey, man, some of y'all be bringing cakes every Sunday. And just pass them out. Because <laughs> you don't like nobody. You don't like nobody. Just bring whole, a bunch of whole cakes. <laughs> bring a pan of cornbread. Just put in the back and just pass it out. Coming to the close. There are some conditions for. Oh, let me just put one more in there. I'm talking about the conditions for First of all, if you don't understand something, if you don't can't figure something out, we all got those situations. I got some things going on in my life right now that I just can't figure out. I, I don't know what to do. I talked to Dick about some of those last uh, Tuesday. And, and I promise you they won't tell you. I, I, I trust them. To, they, they won't tell you. It, it, but, but sometimes. We all just don't know what to do about some things. Isn't that right? Job things, children things, finance things, health things. But, but James said, if you don't know what to do, you don't have to get upset about it. You get afraid and frustrated about it. You have to call a lot of folks and talk about it. James says, if any of you like wisdom, James 1 5, let him ask of God. Because he really does know everything. He is, like, oh, as preachers like to say, he is uh, a musician that he knows everything. He is omnipotent, that means he's all powerful. He is omnipresent, that means he's everywhere. He is immutable, and, and he is, uh, in, 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 you know, all the things I can say. The promise said is that God knows everything, and God can do everything, so why don't you talk to God? Amen. If any of you, James, is like wisdom, let him ask the God, this is like our response, who give it to all men liberally. God just pour out knowledge and wisdom and grace and love and mercy if you talk to God. Amen. Who give it to all men liberally and upright. It. God don't criticize you for being stupid. Amen. He asked me those stupid questions. God does not charge you for asking stupid questions. Who give it to all men liberally and upright it not. And James said, and it shall be given him. That's a promise. That's a promise. So when I don't know what to do, when I don't know how to do, when I don't know when to do, when I don't know where to do, and when I don't know who to do with what, I need to ask God. Because he said, I give to all men liberally. And you can't ask me a question that's they need me to answer. Because all children in the eyes of God. You know, if a child asks you a question, even if it was an irrelevant question, you'd be patient and answering the question. Mama, where did the babies come from? Oh, baby, the stork fly by. Because 
church folks can sometimes ask. I ain't gonna say that. But 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 but, but God said I will respond liberally and I won't be criminal. Three things for getting two things for getting your prayers answered. Two things for getting your prayers answered. I said he was a God that hears and answers prayer. He said, not me in Jeremiah 3, 3, 3, call me and I'll answer to you. He said in Matthew 7, ask and shall be given to seek and you find and knock and door shall be open. Right? So then what must I do then to be a recipient of the promises that God has made? May I say, the reason prayer is so important because you can't handle anything without prayer. Go back to the text. Jesus said, men are always afraid and not the afraid. He's trying to tell you if you don't pray about it, you're going to pray because of it. <laughs> so, it's important to understand how to get my, my prayers answered. It's not complicated. Because God can give us things that complicated because we fail the test. It's not an easy test. You got to go to 30 or 36, 33. God gives us easy things to do because the easy is all what we are capable of doing. He said, listen, it's your answer my prayer. It's very simple. First of all, you saw it times ago, who's praying for us from Sunday school? You got some help. You got some help. He said, I pray the Father. He called Peter in Matthew and Luke 22. He said, listen, Peter, I pray for you that your faith fail not. Satan has desired to sift you as sweet. But I pray for you, Peter. I pray for you, Peter. Satan will come after you. Satan will tempt you. Satan will bother you. Satan will deceive you. Satan will distract you. Satan will discourage you. Satan will hurt you. But I pray for you, Peter. Yeah. All right. Anybody know one prayer? Jesus prayed to God and answer. And he says, I'm saying the desire to sift you sweet. And then he went on to say, but and without convert, Peter, don't take all that for yourself. You do what? Strengthen your presence. Mm -hmm. See, God answers our prayer so we can go help somebody else. It's not about us. But in some you learn that Jesus what prays for us. He's told us that I pray for the Father. Not that you take him out of the world, but that you do what? Protect him from the evil one. Father in him. So I got Jesus praying for me. It's only condition, there's only two conditions for making my prayers to work. And making the prayer that Jesus prays for us. First of all, I got to be, I belong to him. Second Chronicles 7 14 that Brother Ronald Ray, Ronald Ray said it's my people. That text is about his people. It's my people.
when your iniquities, iniquities have caused him to hide his face from you that he will not hear. You can't live in sin and disobedience and expect God to hear you. You got to have a relationship with him. And it's got to be an obedient relationship with him. Because a relationship where there's not obedience is not really a relationship. If your husband don't listen to you, you may be married, but you don't have a what? Relationship. If your wife don't listen to you, you may be married, but you don't have... In fact, you think, what kind of relationship is this? We don't even talk to each other. <laughs>
Praying right now, I give you this invitation that you come to Christ. The Bible said in Hebrews 4 25. Now to him that is able to save to the utmost. To them that come to God by him. For he liveth.